Hi, I'm The Mitten, and you're listening to The Mitten on Knitting. Thanks for tuning in. There's 71 days till Rhinebeck, so let's see what I've been up to. In Loose Threads this week, um, first I want to apologize for being two days late with the podcast. I lost my voice, and I thought it was going to come back, and it just simply did not. Um, So I was trying to figure out how to get the podcast up. It's not like I have someone that I'm podcasting with that they could go ahead and uh, just take over for the episode um, or anything like that. And then I was thinking, well, you know, maybe I could type it all up and have Siri read it. And then I thought that was like a little odd and strange. Um, but actually, maybe I'll look into doing that in case, because my voice does give out uh, often. Um, and uh, I just, um, there's nothing you can do about it. Otherwise, I end up, this is me shouting when my voice goes out, um, which isn't very pleasant to listen to. <laughs> so I do want to apologize uh, again for not having the podcast up by Tuesday at noon, Um, and uh, thank you for coming back to listen. In uh, other loose threads this week, I've been looking at the um, vendors are starting to let us know that they're going out to Rhinebeck, and uh, Periwinkle Sheep, Karen, is going to be in Building A, Um, so we're very excited. Karen was one of our not a sponsors, uh, and uh, right now I am knitting up with some of her lovely dyed yarn. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing her in Building A at Rhinebeck, and she'll be um, partnering with uh, one of the local uh, a, a yarn store that shop that uh, sells her yarn. Um, so that should be loads and loads of fun. So yay, Karen, periwinklesheep.com. What's fit in the mitten this week? Well, I know I spent last week uh, telling everybody uh, about the um, horrible, horrible hot weather that we've been having and, and how wool was sticking everywhere. Well, it's August, and... Right on cue, uh, a chill is in the air. Um, some of the leaves on the trees are starting to turn yellow, and uh, fall is on its way, and it will come in quickly. Um, so, it is the end of summer, but it's also the beginning of fall, and winter is right around the corner. So, um, yes, I've been wearing my socks. I've been using the Gainsey both as a pillow on the train and as a wrap in the office. And um, I also wore the line break um, shawl, uh, which I really like to wear in the office. And then I was thinking about my Citroen, because I really, I've only worn it twice since I knit it. And I think that's just one of those wraps that was destined to be knit by me, but not worn by me. And then I was thinking about giving it away, and I decided not to, because I really like it, and I made it, and it's mine. <laughs> so I did not wear the Citroen, but I did wear the line break, and I, I mentioned them kind of together because I, I knit them uh, one after the other. And in my head, they're always like the two shawls, even though I've also knit the Celeste and the Gainsey, um, and i um, working on something else now. So uh, that's what's fit in the mitten. Uh, socks, the Gainsey, line break, but not the Citroen. And what have I been knitting? Well, I've been knitting <laughs> a shawl uh, called Rippin'. And I think the reason that the um, Megan Jackson, the designer, called it Rippin' 
is because when you first start, you'll be ripping it out a bit. It is the cutest little shawl, though. It's got, um, it's, the edging is knit on it, so you don't have to, like, go back afterwards and add an edging, which I like. It's got a nice field of um, stockinette right in the center. And then the lace on the side, they're like uh, chevrons um, going up each of the sides. And then there's a swath of lace leaves um, that go up on the left-hand side of, of the of the field of stockinette. Um, so I really like that. You know, I'm, I'm very fond of, of leaves. Otherwise I wouldn't have knit all of those leaves out of my very first wheel spun fiber. Um, I just, um, they make me happy. And, uh, I'm knitting this in the periwinkle sheep, um, watercolors and the colorway is autumn in the Hudson Valley. So the periwinkle sheep watercolors, that's a fingering weight yarn. It's really two singles plied. It's a two ply uh, yarn, two singles plied together. And autumn in the Hudson Valley is all of these beautiful orange and rusts and almost going into reds, um, colors that you find in the trees in the Hudson Valley in autumn, and Karen did a fantastic job with this yarn, and it just goes so well with the pattern, um, especially the the leaf uh, motif that goes up the side of the stockinette field. Um, so it's really, I think, going to be nice. I'm at the halfway point. Um, I've been doing a section a day, and uh, so far, so good. Of course, um, I wasn't the one who thought of doing this. Kath was the one who came up with um, knitting a shawl and she wanted to knit with somebody, so we're actually both doing it together. I think she's using it as, as a distraction from my right Rhinebeck sweater, though. I think she's trying to put me off target, uh, make me lose sight of the goal, but I'm not. I spend the uh, morning train commute, um, which is... Uh, about three hours between the train and the bus working on the, the Rhinebeck sweater and I've made uh, some good pr progress with that. I am I have divided for the sleeves and I'm working up the left front. Um, so that's been going nicely and I'm just taking it and being very, very cautious, very cautious and uh, careful as I go up the, the left front there because I finished up that big um, cake which was the eight skeins and I'm down to the little uh, smaller cakes that were the left front, left, uh, right front and the back. Um, <clears throat> so it only, it, it, it only used a little bit more yarn, um, maybe, I don't know, I'd say 75 yards more yarn um, going up the one size and up the one needle size. Um, so I'm really hoping uh, that it's going to fit. Well, we'll see. Anyway, um, and then of course Mr. Minton's socks. I, I actually took those out and worked on those. And hmm, what else? Oh, yeah, I was knitting on the socks of many heels. Uh, and that's what the mittens been knitting. So what have I been spinning? Nothing. I didn't get any spinning in this week. Um, it's been a bit of a busy week, uh, but you know, feeling under the weather, losing my voice. I was just really content to knit. And don't tell Mr. Mitten, but the most content to knit, uh, the socks because it was just round, round, round. Um, so no spinning happening this week. Um, maybe next week. What have I finished? I finished the socks of many heels. Um, and I put them on right away and started wearing them. 
they still need to have their little spa bath. But uh, they're so nice and comfy, and I really like them, and I'm really glad that I took the time to go through and uh, do the heels 15 times because they fit really well. Um, so I will be enjoying those. And like I said, they they are a contender for uh, part of my Rhinebeck wardrobe because they do have the burgundy as well as the rust orange, grays, and whites in the... Um, in the yarn and uh, the self-striping sock yarn and so um, they are a contender for Rhinebeck socks. Um, they're certainly comfortable enough to wear for all of that walking um, and uh, I really like the way they turned out. So I finished those up and um, that was that was all I got finished but it was uh, it was a triumph uh, to have them all done. So there you have it, there it is. And now a word not from a sponsor. Yarnitecture, the newest book from Jillian Moreno is 240 pages of planning and building tips and techniques from the exploration of fleece, bats, and roving through drafting, plying, and finishing. Jillian helps guide you through to your perfect yarn, even including 12 new patterns by leading knitwear designers to show off your finished product. Yarnitecture by Jillian Marino from Story Publishing is worth the read. Get it now on Amazon or stop by to see Jillian in person at Rhinebeck. In Stash Up Down this week, um, Stash Down, because I have finished using up uh, the yarn for the socks of many heels, and that... Um, made me very very happy it's a Saka Fortissima Mexico sock wool yarn uh, the colorway is 9096 which I said is it's an orange but it's it's a uh, burnt orange which is close to the color of leaves in fall um, which is lovely and as I said it's got the uh, burgundy and the white and the gray in it um, because it is a self-striping sock yarn. And I was so excited when I um, finished that up and had it all used up, uh, because it was the tipping point for my stash and my project page and, uh, on Ravelry. And uh, I finally gotten to the point where I have completed more projects than I have yarn in my stash. Um, so I was really excited and uh, about that, finally getting there. Um, then I went uh, to grab the Watercolors 2 uh, Periwinkle Sheep Autumn in the Hudson Valley skein out of my stash, and I realized I hadn't reached the tipping point because I f have not yet added the uh, fiber that I picked up at Rhinebeck when I went for the uh, spin and, at, and clean up at the war room. So I have five uh, more five more items to add into my stash um, from that. Um, but it's okay. It's all good. That's fiber and uh, fiber and yarn, of course, are two different stash categories and sock yarn doesn't count at all in stash. Um, unless I'm stashed downing, <laughs> but uh, it's all good, and uh, it just means I will be more discreet and and selective about what I'm purchasing when I make my purchases for the year at Rhinebeck. Um, so that's that's just perfectly fine. I do go through my entire stash prior to going to the festival, so I'm not adding duplicates or um, purchasing things that I already have a lot of, and I try and think of what I want to be making over the course of the year. For example, I know that I will make a headband and a pair of mittens um, for Mr. Mitten, and I know I will make a or try to make a sweater for Rhinebeck next year. 
Um, so those are two items that I will be looking to purchase as well as I always try and find a um, exotic wool, uh, exotic fiber to spin. Uh, this year I purchased yak. Um, so uh, in the coming year I'll probably uh, try and find some Paco Vicuna or something like that, um, which is, it's just a, a chance to sample. I usually get like a one ounce sample of the, the really fancy um, fibers, just so I can see what it's like to spin it up, um, and that'll be lovely. Uh, so stash up down, a little bit of down, but not as down as I thought it would be. And where I want to be, um, well, since I haven't been feeling well uh, this week, uh, where I wanted to be was home, where I ended up being was work, and that's perfectly fine. Um, work is work is always good. If you can get out the door and head to work and get your paycheck, that's nothing wrong with that. Um, so where I want to be is uh, really home and work and, and just keeping everything on a level playing field. Uh, August is a vacation month for most of the folks in my office, so it's nice and quiet, um, and it's pleasant, and like I said, the temperatures have cooled down. I'm sure they'll heat up again next week or so, but, you know, it's just, it's just kind of nice to have a set routine and get some knitting done and, and calmness and happiness throughout the the land so to speak um so that's what I've been uh that's what I've been looking forward to doing and where I want to be and actually where I've been um so it's all good for grabby paws um this week <laughs> actually it's kind of a bit strange because I've been shopping for virtually shopping that is for um, breakfast <laughs> items for the Rhinebeck breakfast um, you know the quiche the croissant fruit yogurt uh, some tea coffee juice uh, you know I try and try and have a nice assortment of things to eat sweet and savory and um so i've been virtually shopping uh recipes <laughs> for the rhinebeck breakfast uh, it's uh probably not what most people think about when they think about uh fiber uh driven people looking for things to purchase online um but in this case, a good breakfast, um, I think, makes for a good festival because, you know, if you get a nice balanced breakfast, you have lots of energy um, to do all the walking um, that you need to do when you're at Rhinebeck. And some folks, they actually start off at a run um, from the gate when the, when the ticket uh, counter's open, when the gate's open, um, because they're trying to make it, say, to um, Jenny the Potter's. Um, display or, or to the fleece sale. And uh, the sooner you get in, the better your chances of, for Jenny the Potter, the better your chances of actually getting something. And for the fleece sale, the better your chances of getting an excellent fleece to take home. So um, that's, that's why a breakfast is, is so vital and important. And um, that's why I've been looking at recipes uh, instead of uh, spinning wheels or fiber or yarns. Um, so there you have it. For dough this week, uh, I kind of alluded it, uh, to it in, in the uh, knitting segment, um, but my dough was really on this ripping uh, shawl. I started it and ripped it out and started it and ripped it out and started it and ripped it out. This must have gone on, I think, eight times um, before I got the 
first uh, pattern chart down and um, looking good. And then the next day, of course, I had to rip. Uh, we're doing a chart a day, so uh, the next day I had to rip it all the way back, work the first chart up, and then do the second chart, which got ripped back many times. It took me until, I think, day three or four before I actually bothered to put in a lifeline. And um, now the lifeline is all the way down at the bottom of the increases, so I'm going to be moving the lifeline today up to the top when I switch to the next chart. Um, because I, I think since I put the lifeline in, knock on wood, I haven't had to rip back that far. Um, so it's kind of a reminder of me to be a bit more cautious. Uh, but there was a lot of ripping, ripping on the ripping. And uh, it, it just made me laugh, actually. Um, because it was just, it's not a difficult pattern. It's just a matter of being focused on knitting lace. And when you come off of knitting a sweater, which is knit pearl and cable, and then you go to lace, which is uh, both way decreases and yarn overs are added in, it just takes a little bit more focus for your fingers to remember what to do. Plus this is lace that's patterned on both sides. It's not a straight pearl back. Um, so I guess they call this true lace. Um, oh, and if you wanted to see it, um, I've been put posting pictures of it on the, Insta on the Instagram feed, um, which is the mitten on knitting. Um, and the Instagram feed also goes over to um, Twitter and Facebook um, so you can see pictures of the progress there, like I said, um, up to day seven, and, um, and it looks pretty cool. But that was my big dough for the week, aside from a, a cable that needed to be put in the other way on the Rhinebeck sweater. I don't know why I always do opposite, uh, facing cables. Um, so I had to ladder down just four rows, and uh, switch the way the cable went, and that went pretty quickly. You know when you do a repair on a cable, and it goes really quickly, it tells you how many times you've done repairs on cables, uh, which is kind of shameful, but uh, at least I know how to fix it, right? That's a good thing, isn't it? Alrighty. This week, we also had... Um, you didn't know there was a contest contest winner, and the winner was Kath, which was kind of funny, um, mostly because she writes in a lot of questions. As a matter of fact, uh, the question this week is from her. So it's, some people are just like, well, is Kath the only one who enters in the contest? No, she's not the only one who enters in the contest, but... Um, the random generator number and her seem to have a very good relationship, uh, which is fantastic. So congratulations, Kath. Um, I have sent you off a ball of sock yarn because I picked the winner out of the sock yarn thread on Ravelry, the Mitten on Knitten podcast group. Um, so I hope you really like it. Uh, I thought of what you liked when I was picking it out. And uh, it should be, it should be at your mailbox as we speak. Alrighty, so there you have it. In questions this week, uh, our question is from Kath, and she writes, "Dear Miss Mitten, seeing Janet's gorgeous socks and reading that she added another homespun yarn to the pattern, has brought up a question that I know we talked about in the past." What is the best join to use when knitting socks? I want something that will hold through lots and lots of wearings and washings with no extra thickness where the join is made, and obviously no knot. Uh, I have used split splicing in some of my joins, but never with socks. In fact, I've been lucky and only once ever had to splice yarns while knitting socks. I've seen those intriguing socks with the different colored 
toes and heels, and I would love to try making them. It's the splicing that has stopped me. Please help. I will be anxiously awaiting your wisdom, your faithful follower, Kath. And uh, so here's my response, Kath. Um, thank you for your question. Don't worry. Uh, don't worry about your socks um, and the splicing. Don't be anxious. Anxious knitting leads to a tighter gauge, and that just won't do. So be relaxed and calm. For color work in socks, um, my preferred method is the back join. Um, I believe it gives a good distinct change for color and is very secure. What you do is you interlock the two colors like two interlocking U's at the exact point where you want the color change and knit the ends in as you go. Um, so knit with color A to the spot you want the color change. Stick a pin in color A to mark that spot. Tink back like three to five stitches and then you loop back color A at the pinned point, so the bottom of the U is where the pin is. Then you insert color B into that color A loop that you just made where the pin is, so the bottom of the U for color B is meeting the bottom of the U for color A. And you leave a little tail on, col on color B, so you'll be able to knit that forward and that'll lock it in. Um, take the pin out, um, then knit the three stitches with the doubled color A yarn. And then you're at the pin point, which is where you inserted color B, which is where the, the pin was and you want the change. So now go ahead and knit three stitches with color B doubled to work the colored B tail in. Um, and I've put a link on the, on the Ravelry uh, message board in the sock thread. Um, to there's a tech knitting blog spot and they describe really clearly how to do the tech the um, back join technique um, to get a less bulky join you knit um, knitting in the ends of color a on the color change row and then you knit the co ends of color b on the row above so you would um, knit those two ends of color A up to where that pinpoint was where you want the color change and then instead of continuing on with color B and that extra tail you would leave the extra tail hanging and the next time you go around you would pick up the extra tail and, that had, and knit it in on the row above. That's called a reduced bulk back join which is also on the tech knitting block spot. Um, some knitters actually snip off some of the plies when they do a back join. So if you're using a four ply yarn, as you knit forward, you keep one ply on the forward yarn and one ply on the doubled back yarn tail. Um, and it'll look like four plies on the knitwork. The other two plies you ruthlessly cut. And then um, with the new color, you have one ply on the forward and one ply on the back and cut the other two plies. I've never seen it done, really, and I've never tried to do it. Um, personally, I think it might be one of those campfire tales told to scare knitters before they go to bed, um, because it doesn't sound very wise to me, um, but purportedly some people swear by it. So to sum up, a back join or reduced bulk back join are my color changing joins of choice, and they're the way I change colors on my hap shawl which worked really nicely before I ripped it out. And I will use them again when I take the half shawl out of hibernation, which may be a while. Don't hold your breath. <clears throat> I'm still mad at that. Uh, even though it wasn't the yarn's fault, it was absolutely the knitter's fault. Um, the problem was between the chair and the knitting needles, and that's me. So uh, I hope this answers your question, and uh, I hope you have a great week. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. <laughs>